Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. As I may have mentioned in the past, one of my primary intended uses for the Jefferson was for testing custom shotgun slugs. Now, some shotgun slugs will stabilize uh, adequately out of a smoothbore barrel, others require spin stabilization. And so, for testing, I figured I had better make a 12-gauge rifled slug barrel for the Jefferson in addition to the smoothbore barrel that I already made. I started by cutting threads on the chamber end of a 12-gauge barrel blank identical to the one from which I had made the first Jefferson barrel. I then flame blued the barrel. I made a 12 gauge rifling button by my usual method, except that I went with a duplex 12 groove rifling pattern that I thought would provide a little bit less friction and be easier to drive than my usual 6 groove spline rifling pattern. After generously lubricating the bore with sulfurized canola oil, I drove the button through the barrel with my hydraulic rifling press. Here is a view of the resulting rifling looking down the barrel from the chamber end. The next step was to interrupt the threads. This I did by first screwing the barrel all the way into the receiver and marking where the interrupted thread on the receiver lined up with the barrel. Then, with the portions of thread that I wanted to keep oriented on the top and bottom of the barrel, I milled the edges of the thread interruptions and also milled the threads off the sides of the barrel. The resulting flats on the sides made it easy to align when I turned it over so I could mill the edges of the thread interruptions on the other side. After finishing this initial mill work, I ground away the remaining unwanted threads with a Dremel. Completing the interrupted thread completed the barrel, so after checking the fit, I proof-tested the new barrel with a few hot loads. The barrel passed the proof test with flying colors. Well, now we've got a rifled slug barrel for the Jefferson, and we know that it works in the sense that it won't blow up, uh, but the question remains, will it actually stabilize 12-gauge projectiles? Well, if you recall the uh, slug baselining test that I did earlier with the Jefferson, I still have a few of these copper matrix bullets left that were keyholing when fired through the smoothbore barrel. Uh, let's go ahead and fire these at a target through the rifle barrel and see if they do any better. Well, so far so good. I only had three of those copper matrix rounds left, but it looks like those three uh, all went through the target nose first. I wonder if that rifled barrel would stabilize wax slugs. Let's put a few wax slugs through that rifled barrel and see how they perform.
Well, that's interesting. Out of three shots fired, there are no new holes in the target. I'm guessing those wax slugs must be breaking apart uh, coming out of that rifle barrel. And here we see some streaks in the snow between the bench and the target. I would take that as further evidence that these wax slugs are in fact disintegrating out of that rifled barrel. As a final test, let's compare the pattern density of an ordinary birdshot load fired through the rifled barrel versus the smoothbore barrel using the Jefferson. Okay, so at a range of just seven yards, from the smoothbore, the birdshot is mostly patterning inside about a six to seven inch circle. Whereas from the rifled barrel, it's just kind of scattering everywhere. Which again lends credence to the idea that the rifling is doing its job and the rotational inertia imparted to the shot is causing it to disperse more rapidly. Okay, well, I think I'm satisfied that this rifled barrel for the Jefferson seems to be functioning correctly. Uh, this should be a useful piece of equipment for testing certain types of shotgun slugs in the future. But until then, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.